praise the Lord. The Lord is so good and gracious. God is so good. God is so good and greatly to be praised. Praise the Lord for this wonderful opportunity that we have today. If you have your word with us today, I just want to praise the Lord and go to the word and God in prayer. Father, we praise you. We honor you in company, humbling ourselves to you, majesty. Surrender our lives to you today, Lord, Father. I praise you, I honor you, to God be the glory. Bless every listener today, Lord, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus, amen. If you have your word with you, I'd like for you to turn to the book of Jonah, chapter 1. Jonah, chapter 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city and great outcry, and cry out against it, for their wickedness had come before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Jobah and found a ship to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish. Praise the Lord is a reminder today. The story of Jonah. The story of Jonah, we're not, we are familiar with the story of Jonah. But I just wanted to touch base. As a reminder for all of us today, that Jonah was a prophet. Jonah grew up, was born and grew up and raised in Jerusalem. Jerusalem in Israel, in, in, in a place called Hafer, where he was born and raised and reared there. From there, it's like a 500 miles from there to Tarshish not to Tarshish, was 500 miles from where Jonah was born in, in, in Israel to Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital, is the capital of Syria. And then God, somehow God told Jonah, instructed Jonah to go and tell the people of Nineveh to repent because he is going to destroy them. But Jonah did not. Jonah in his heart, being a, being an Israelite, in his heart he was thinking like, why do I need to go? Because the people worshipped idols. The people worshipped idols. And not only they worship idols, they're to Israel's enemies. And this goes like that Jonah, in his heart, he wanted God. He was feared. He was feared that if he goes in his heart, he wanted God to punish the people of, of Tarshish, of Nineveh. In his heart, he said, God, why do I need to go? Why don't you destroy them? Because in his heart he was feared that God would have mercy on such a wicked people as the Assyrian is. But Jonah forgotten three theological truths. Jonah, Jonah forgotten that God created everyone. That God raised up the Israel to be a, to be a blessing to all nations, to everyone. Jonah forgotten that God desired for everyone to have a relationship with him. So many a time believers, we're just like Jonah sometimes. We think like, God, I don't want to forgive this and that. Why should I go be the first one to repent? This and that, this, this to me. But see, we've forgotten that God created your best, worst enemy today. God created everyone. That is in a mentality of Jonah. Growing up in Israel, Israel was the enemies. Was, uh, Assyria was the enemies of Israel to this day. But he forgotten. Sometimes we're like Jonah. We forgot that God created everyone. And Jonah forgotten that God raised up Israel to be a blessing to all people. But yet, God loved Jonah. He showed his great love through 
discipline. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Through a discipline. When Jonah, God showed his great love through discipline. God sent raging waters. God sent storming. Ocean was storming. Sent these, the uh, havoc in the ocean. When Jonah to bombard it, you know, he sent, God sent the storm to bombard it. The ship that Jonah that he was in. Praise the Lord. And you know what happened? While he was sleeping in the saloon, you know the story. The sailors cast Lot. And the Lord indicated on Jonah while he was sleeping in the, in, in the saloon. And Jonah said, and the people were saying, and the sailor was saying, my God. Why are they storming? Why are these raging waters? We're going to drown. That is coming against us. Let's cast Lot. And the Lot fell on Jonah. And Jonah said to them, I am the one that caused all this raging, storming weather that is coming on you to destroy you because of me. In Jonah's instance, insistence that they threw him over to the raging waters of the ocean, thinking he'll die and end his life there. There he'll be drowned and he'll be gone and never come back. Yet in his life, this disobedient uh, prophet, this disobedient uh, this, this prophet, God still rescued Jonah. God prepared a big fish to rescue Jonah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This obedient prophet finally come to his sense. Finally come to his sense. Repentance. Disobedience. And repented his disobedience to God from the belly of of the fish. God was not finished with that, with Jonah. The story says that the belly of the fish was smell like grave. The grave was smell not good. But it took the disobedient prophet inside the belly of the fish, inside the fish, the belly of the fish to 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 uh regret his disobedience and repented from the fish belly. And God heard Jonah's, Jonah, God, God heard Jonah's cry and he let the fish, the shark or the fish, vomit Jonah to the dry land. Hallelujah. How many times of us that we've been through here and there that God still come to rescue us from our ups and down. But then Jonah is a good example to us. God rescued Jonah through the belly of the fish, from the belly of the fish and vomit him to the dry land. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then what happened? God was not done with Jonah. Even Jonah rebellious and said, no, why don't you destroy? But God, he was not done with Jonah. When the fish vomited him to the, to, to the dry land, and God told Jonah, God called him the second time. The second time he called him again. Go to the people of Nineveh. Tell them to repent. And then what happened? Without no doubt, Without no questioning and asking God, like his first calling for him, Jonah got up and went and told the people of Nineveh to repent before God destroyed them. And what happened? God had mercy on the people of Assyrian, of the people of Nineveh. Praise the Lord. Isn't God great? They repented. But in Jonah's heart, before he goes, no, I don't want to. Because they worship idols, this and that. I'm telling you, from an experience. 
Jonah had two warnings from God to finish up the job. I had four warnings. I had four warnings walking with death on my side. But God rescued me four times. And this is my last ride. God said, this is it for me. That is why I'm standing here to tell you. If you have been a Jonah in your family, if you have been a Jonah in school, in the government, in the church, I ask you, if you hear the word of God, don't harden your heart. Give your life to Jesus Christ. It's our only might only. It's our only second chance. My heart goes out to those who are in prison, those who are in jail. You're probably locked up in there. But let me tell you, your heart is not locked up. God put you there for a purpose. For what? Tell someone in there, there's always Jesus. There's always a second chance for them. The story of Jonah is a great example for all of us. Jesus Christ gives that second chance to the cross in Calvary. Jesus Christ paved the way. The only way we can know him is through the cross of Jesus Christ. I challenge your life today. Jesus, he loves you. He cares about you. If you're willing in your heart, you've been in and out. Playing games with God. Going and play in the instruments, in the church, being in the band, in the church. I'm asking you, and then you to stop. If you're doing in and out and playing games with God, thinking I'll go this, I'll go to the world and come back and save and, and serve God back and forth. I'm challenging you. I'm asking you. It's time to do business with God. This is your generation. You rise up and save the people from your left to your right to God. That's the only way. And God sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross because of our sinners. If you're willing in your heart, please keep your life to Jesus Christ. Say this prayer, Father God, I'm a sinner and you need it of a savior. I repent. I ask Jesus Christ, your precious blood, cleanse my heart from all unrighteousness. Father God, I welcome you, Savior, into my life. Make you as my personal Savior. Lord Jesus, help me to walk daily with you for your glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, bless in each and every one of those that just received you as your Savior. Guide them, Lord, to look to you regardless of what. Father, I give you all the glory, all the praises to you, Jesus, alone. I pray, amen. Thank you for watching the word of God as a servant of God. If God does not come today, the next hour, the next minute or so, we'll be right here to tell you that Jesus loves you. You go with Jesus and have a blessed day with Jesus. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen.